Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comdarchi Podcast Season 4. Saison 4 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et and maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spot Season 4, Episode 65 in English. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. Today, we are talking about rehabilitate, renovate, heritage, sustainability, and decarbonation. Many great subjects in one, in ten short minutes, subjects that we will not refrain from reinterrogating tirelessly. For some, we need to get the measure of what is happening to us, or it's already done and more than done. For others, every day we are told about global warming. Within this, there are many nuances which should not make us feel guilty. Within that, there is construction consuming colossal quantities of energy and architecture whose duty is to shelter us with the challenges of present times. But we like housing. What is sure is that heat waves fall on us more and more often, plummet us in a recurrent way without us having the time to realize. We are helplessly watching the devastation of California, Australia, our own Midi by fire, our churches, the desertification of the hottest areas of our Mother Earth. On one side, the most recalcitrant climate skeptics, on the other, the fearful who multiply violent injunctions. As if we could change everything overnight without the risk of accelerating the collapse. For my part, I believe in mass homeopathy and it seems to me that many intentions are going in the right direction. This is good, because it is high time to get moving and to be courageous. In this will to decarbonize the built universe, I am always happy to see the heritage preserved. Today, when we record this podcast, I just came out of a visit to a building site in the 11th district of Paris, a rehabilitation and construction extension operation, a beautiful mix between an inherited and restored volumetry in the facade, a volumetry cleverly produced at the bottom of a plot, with a consideration of the urban landscape, of the seeing and being seen, and of the vegetation. Many knowledgeable architectural agencies achieve quite interesting results, more and more, so it seems to me. Do we really get the measure of this? While some politicians make sweeping announcements as if it was more understandable for the common people. Like, we have to demolish churches on the one hand if we want to preserve heritage on the other. And here we are. We must constantly renounce what we are and what everyone envises. Our old stones, our lancet arches, those of our churches. And why not desacralize? Protect for the better when it is absolutely necessary rather than demolish. Then use these famous lancet arches, called broken arches in French, use their proportions, their constructive impulses, the romanticism of the ruin, in respect of our landscapes full of souls. In 2014, Philippe Serrand, editor-in-chief of Pierre d'Angle magazine, pointed out in his article Reflection on the Reconversion of Places of Worship Throughout History that, and I quote, Like any other construction, churches have been subject to reuse throughout history. Our ancestors simply had a certain practical sense and did not bother with heritage considerations in the modern sense of the term. If the original use was lost and a new need existed, the economy of the operation was based on the time saved and the cost of construction materials. The religious power being owner and actor of these transformations, the moral question was solved upstream. However, these transformations remain punctual. End of quote. To preserve absolutely all that can be and to reuse what we are not able to draw anymore because this drawing itself must be financed. Have we forgotten so much that financing is about desire and not profitability? 
So, past operation, we talk about storytelling to arouse again the desire, to arouse a desire to live or rather to consume by stories made from scratch and that are imposed, unwanted stories. We do things backwards. The cathedral builders simply believed, don't you? Believe in the generation of unprecedented energy in a sacred way or not, it doesn't matter. On the UNESCO website, there is a page entitled World Heritage in Danger. It says, Armed conflicts and war, earthquakes and other natural disasters, pollution, poaching, uncontrolled urbanization and uncontrolled tourism development pose major problems for the World Heritage Sites. They can endanger the characteristics for which a site was inscribed on the World Heritage List. These endangered sites may be in a situation of proven danger when they face specific and established imminent threats or in a situation of endangerment when they face threats that could have detrimental effects on their world heritage values. Even this world heritage is under threat. The JDD of April 8, 2023, underlined that beyond religious buildings, it is all the French treasures, that is to say 45,991 classified monuments, which are in danger. So we can only rejoice that the work of the past, preserved in a homeopathic way during ordinary operations with little media coverage. Architects work on their own small scale and must continue to battle in the heart of our urban fabrics in the smallest corners. Certainly, for the past six years, the Mission for the Safeguarding of Endangered Heritage, led by Stéphane Bern, in partnership with the Heritage Foundation and with the support of the Ministry of Culture and FDJ, designates each year, after the French vote on the Mission Bern.fr platform, 18 emblematic sites throughout the territory. Since 2018, 762 sites have been restored, including 108 emblematic regional heritage projects. The 2023 lineup unveiled Thursday, March 16, 2023, goes from Gallo Roman site to Old Sugar Mills through religious monuments or castles, yes, castles, and in whose enclosure once the strongest knew how to protect the weakest for the oldest ones. This is good. But it is not enough. The earthquake is now almost localizable, but hard to control. On the other hand, man has the power to put an end to wars. Man has the power to limit global warming, notably through massive renovation and rehabilitation campaigns. Man has the power to stop pollution with the use of virtuous materials and devices. Man has the power to stop poaching. Man has the power to stop uncontrolled urbanization. Man has the power to stop the uncontrolled development of tourism. Perhaps we could consult this list every morning. And continuing to believe sounds like a duty. Raphael Labruni, architect, PhD in history, director of the École Nationale Supérieure d'Architecture de Normandie, pointed out in 2019, with regard to contemporary cultural and ecological issues, If the primary responsibility of project owners is to be pointed out, that of the architectural profession must also be clearly analyzed, and in particular, the responsibility of their initial training. It is above all a question of analyzing the relevance of the operations carried out. Several recent dynamics have developed, starting with those of the Ministry of Culture, which launched its multi-year strategy for heritage in November 2017. In it, there is a clear obligation to train architects, starting with the bachelor's degree, in the challenges of reusing built heritage. In addition, research allows new environmental models to emerge, creating novel implementations, combining the characteristics of the existing and contemporary innovations. End of quote. Six years later, we should start to measure important results with the time of maturation helping, after the time of the building sites, not to mention that the teachers themselves find eco in their practice. In Kamdashi, we will try to scrutinize these achievements. Dear all, see you next week for a new issue. Until then, take care. See you soon. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Robourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today.
Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcast or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.